quarter of a century ago, I was part of a notable UPS strike when 185,000 of us, the workers of UPS, halted the UPS giant operations. As a result, package deliveries were drastically cut. The U.S. Postal Service and FedEx were overburdened and could not handle all the extra businesses and businesses all over the U.S. were significantly impacted. You fast forward to now, 2023, and now there is over 340,000 UPS workers, backed by the Teamsters Union, are teetering on the edge of another potential strike due to unresolved matters concerning wages, working hours, and working conditions. If the company and the union cannot agree during their ongoing contract talks, this threatened strike could potentially become the largest single employer strike in the history of the United States of America. This possible halt of operations is looming as we approach the back to school season and as retailers gear up for the critical holiday stretch later in the year. Reflecting on the potential consequences, industrial experts predict that a brief UPS strike might not have the same catastrophic impact as the one in 1997, thanks to an increased number of shipping alternatives that have emerged since then. However, they warned that a strike lasting more than a week could lead to empty shelves, inflated prices, and delays of deliveries for all customers. In a dire scenario, a prolonged UPS strike might create considerable disruptions in the U.S. supply chain network. Since our 1997 strike, shipping options have expanded. FedEx and regional carriers have expanded, and even Amazon, which was non-existent back then, has developed a robust logistics operation. But with that said, the number of Amazon packages UPS handled in 2022 was 1.3 billion, still a little bit shy of what they need to deliver every single day. They can't do it themselves. Retail giants like Walmart and Target have since established their own last mile delivery operations, as they call it, offering customers the convenience of online purchases within store pickups. The market has also seen an entrance of gig companies such as Uber and DoorDash, more delivery options for more people. This results in retailers not needing to stock up as much for the back to school and holiday season. In fact, many of these companies, as I have reported on, are burdened with excessive merchandise at the present time. Here is how much UPS has made from 2020 till now. UPS annual revenue for 2022 was a staggering $100.3 billion, a 3.14% increase from 2021. UPS annual revenue for 2021 was $97.2 billion, a 14.96% increase from 2020. And in UPS annual revenue for 2020 was $84.6 billion, a 14.2% 2% increase in the company's overall profits from 2019. To avoid possible delays from a strike, carriers like FedEx have been advising shippers and threatening them to swift away from UPS now or we will not take you on if they strike. This is something that they always do when we have a contract year. If something has been going on for years and years and years. As global shipping and logistics firm Pitney Bowes estimates that UPS delivers approximately a quarter of all U.S. packages, about 20 million a day, making the market's capacity to replace UPS inadequate. It can't be done. The most affected by the lengthy strike would be small and medium-sized businesses that are lower in priority compared to larger chains. According to logistic experts, remote areas and their businesses and customers would also be significantly impacted by a extended strike, something that we do not want. Both sides have a lot to lose in a drawn-out dispute, but after years of 
weak contracts and, and the top union heads being in the back pockets of UPS with the workers paying the price, it's time for UPS to step up to the plate and share the wealth. UPS CEO Carol Tomé, Tomé brought in nearly 19 million in total compensation last year, down from 27.6 million in 2021, more than 15 million of Torme's 2022 compensation was stock awards and another 1.2 million was from stock option awards and 1 million was from incentives plan compensation. Her base salary was about 1.5 million, but she seems optimistic about reaching a deal without a strike. As she stated in April, while the Teamsters General President Sean O'Brien cautiously acknowledged progress, but reframes from speculating on the likelihood of a strike. As he said, if we strike, it's on UPS, not the Teamsters. And just the other day, this happened and quote, Sean O'Brien, if UPS wants to negotiate a contract for 1997 working conditions, they're going to get 1997 consequences. O'Brien said, the Teamsters National Negotiating Committee told UPS they will not meet again until the company makes a realistic and respectful economic offer. A ray of hope emerged when the UPS and the Teamsters negotiators reached a agreement on critical issues. The gradual installation of air conditioning in UPS entire fleet of 95,000 package cars. Despite the high stakes, the odds of a strike are believed to be more than 50%, according to the University of Tennessee Supply Chain Institute and a former UPS executive. But there is no one company that could handle the extra volume of 20 million packages a day. January through October, that is. At Christmas time, UPS ships more than 30 million packages every day for 17 days of the 21 shipping days before Christmas. Indeed, the landscape has evolved significantly since the strike I participated in 25 years ago. It's essential to recognize the power dynamics in such negotiations are not one-sided and that successful outcomes often require fair-minded solution that addresses the concerns of all parties involved. We all recognize that. In this context, the potential strike threatened may serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of ongoing fair dialogue, fair engagement, and fair consensus building in labor relationships. It underscores the need for employers to continuously listen to their workers' concerns and act upon them. Equally, it reminds unions of the necessity to fully understand and navigate the wider business and economic environment in which they operate. As we move towards the end of July, the 31st at midnight that is, that's the deadline set for these discussions. All eyes are on UPS and the Teamsters to see whether history will repeat itself or a new chapter in labor relations will be written. For the younger Teamsters, this is a make or break contract that will affect their future as UPS employees. As someone who experienced the strike of 97 firsthand and walked the picket line for 15 days, I'm watching closely and hoping for a resolution that respects the rights and meets the needs of all workers for a better contract than we have had in over a decade. We are proud to wear the brown uniform, but we also want a fair contract for once. Remember this, folks. UPS never gave $1 as a bonus to any employee for working during the pandemic, like so many companies did to show their appreciation to their workers, and UPS took in record profits right to the bank. So, for now, you might want to do your early Christmas shopping or stock up on those certain items that you always order and have delivered every day. But just remember... The future of this whole situation now lies in the hands of multi-billion dollar company called UPS. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. You all stay safe. You keep prepping. Might want to stock up now. Things could get real interesting real quick. I'm out.